The following is a Joel Mahalik production. On November 13th, Felix Unger was asked to remove himself from his place of residence. That request came from his wife. She asked him to leave because he wouldn't listen to the Joel Mahalik show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Joel Mahalik Show on this final show of 2018. And I'm glad you're along for the ride. The final show. That's it. 2018 wraps up. It's over. Some of us are thinking, thank God it's over. Ready to start a new year. Ready to start. But here, here we are. You're listening with me. Sharon is uh, otherwise occupied with other family things at the moment and could not join me on this broadcast. So, uh, But I do want to report that between the last podcast and this podcast, Sharon celebrated a birthday. So a happy birthday to our very own Sharon. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of feel sometimes like it's... Um, uh, not cheating, but it's tough because you have Christmas and then like right behind Christmas is Sharon's birthday. She's double dipping. She's double dipping the holidays, man. <laughs> I'm just kidding if you're listening there, Sharon. So, uh, but no, welcome to the program. JoelMahalik.com is where it's all happening and I have to I have to occasionally get in the habit of spelling the name because Sharon believes that uh, more people would show up at the website <laughs> if, if I spelled it and I said well I've been spelling it for like 20 episodes when we first started but in case you're new and you're not sure it's Joel Mahalik J O E L M I C H A L E C dot com now, I'm not going to worry about spelling the dot com for you because we all know how to get there. So, uh, but yeah, so embarking on 2019, we're going to kiss 2018 goodbye, uh, good riddance, and things like that. And um, so, that's interesting. And I wonder sometimes how other people celebrate New Year's Eve. I have to tell you, I, I, I just don't really celebrate it anymore. I mean, we used to have some uh, family members come over. And, uh, we don't even do that anymore. We, uh, I actually used to, uh, be a mobile disc jockey entertainer for like 23 years. And so what that means on New Year's Eve is you're never home. You're always out doing a party somewhere. And one of the things I do not miss in the least is New Year's Eve parties because I didn't like, you know, you're out there driving around at that critical point in the middle of the night. You know, sometime between one and three, driving home, and having to be out there on a road with other people who shouldn't be behind the wheel on New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, after partying. Uh, very bad drivers out there. In fact, one of the things we're going to talk about later on on the program is everyone knows if you listen to this podcast how adamant I am against bad drivers, wickedly so. And we're going to talk about uh, a Facebook group that has surfaced uh, for the Middletown region of Delaware, Middletown, Odessa, and Townsend. A group specifically to talk about horrible drivers in that area, which I think is a good idea. That's going to come up later on. But So we don't celebrate New Year's Eve. In fact, sometimes I may not be awake all night long <laughs> to even see it come in. And uh, same with Sharon, she she uh, usually isn't awake for the new year either, but I try to make it because I like to watch the ball drop and then switch over to another channel that shows the fireworks over the Delaware River uh, or, you know, from the barges uh, to music. Not that I, the music is always that great, but, uh, and that's it. Is, doesn't that sound exciting? I mean, I'm, I'm probably broadcasting to people that go out and do exciting things on New Year's Eve. I don't. I sit home in my pajamas. 
and ring the new year in like that. Like I should find something to do, which doesn't require me going out. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't know, but, uh, but that's, that's what we do. And, and I mean, the, the year is gone and it went so fast. I mean, 2018 went so fast, I didn't have time to lose any weight. None. And people make these New Year's resolutions, I'm going to lose weight, I'm going to stop smoking, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. I haven't made a New Year's resolution, and I cannot remember when. Because it's pointless. It's pointless. Our lives, we've become so busy and so consumed by other things in life. How do you... How do you meet your goals? If you're if you're still doing resolutions, how do you meet those goals? Like I know I should I need to get in better shape. I need to lose weight. I need but just to say, hey, my resolution is I'm gonna lose weight, that means nothing to nobody and it means nothing to me. It won't happen. When you're in a situation where you work multiple jobs and you find yourself having no time as it is, so then where do you find time to make and yet honor a resolution? I, you know, so if you make them, how do you keep them? All these rhetorical questions that I'm asking you, because I, I, I have nobody to, to bounce it off. You can send answers to me. You can mail them to me, joelmaholicradio at gmail.com. You can just post them on the Facebook page at JM Talk. So uh, a couple of things just to go through. One, I I hope that you heard the Christmas special, a Joel Mahala Christmas. I'm hoping that you had a chance to hear it on one of the many errands that we had on our partner networks. Again, I thank the partners for uh, for airing the show. Uh, I hope if that you got to hear it because it's it will not be available on the feed as a as a podcast. You had to be there when it happened at one of the partner stations and. Uh, we will certainly do it again next year, and uh, we're actually we're we're already in some pre-planning for next year. Uh, one of those things may be a time thing. We may actually extend it next year, depending on the feedback from the partners. Uh, we found that there was so much more music we wanted to share, and we so we may actually increase the time of the show. Um, we have to we have to take a look at that, and again, it will depend on the partners and if they have time. For say a two hour event, you know, but we, we'll look at that. But I, I hope you got a chance to hear it. Um, I, I, I sincerely do. It was it was a great show, it, uh, better than I thought it would have turned out. Having been rusty for a little while, as far as Christmas shows go, and specialty stuff. But we were able to post one piece of it as a podcast, and it's it's getting a lot of downloads. And it was our original production of Yes, Virginia. There is a Santa Claus. It's a, a silly three minute podcast and it's rocking the uh, podcast waves which I'm very proud of thank you very much for all the downloads uh, so that is available as a standalone segment to hear that was aired during the Christmas show so there you have it uh, now other th- uh, something else to note okay uh, we will uh, begin our first, I don't know, what do I want to call it? I guess syndication, I suppose. Uh, when I when we started this venture, when I started this venture last year uh, as a podcast, it was intended to be a podcast, but we're going into syndication on internet radio with 920 WON, the Apple, out of Brooklyn, New York, starting the 6th of January, the first Sunday of January. The show, the podcast, will air as a show. At 11 p.m. on Sunday nights. So we're really excited about that. My return to radio, so to speak. Uh, so that uh, is uh, that's generating a lot of hype here in the Joel Mahalik Show studio. Uh, as far as that happening, we're really excited about that. And we're looking for more opportunities like that uh, out there. So I wonder if these sounds that my computer make go out over the air. I, I I just had that thought. I want to, and I thought to myself, how do I silence this thing? And it, so you don't get these sounds. I don't know. You may not even get the sounds. I don't know. I'll find out when I listen to the podcast. 
So if you hear sounds that don't make any sense, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> it's probably a channel on the mixer I need to turn down. Uh, listen, I uh, so anyway, yes, back to the uh, WON. So uh, I'm very appreciative of the opportunity we have to do that. And that's going to be Sunday nights at 11 p.m. And that is exclusively on Live 365. The link is on the website in the news section. And obviously it will appear uh, in more places. It will start appearing all over the place as it happens. So you have the streaming link for 365 for the station to be able to hear that. So 11 o'clock Sunday nights on 920 WON, the Apple. And that is out of Brooklyn, New York. So New York, we're coming for you. We're coming hard. We're coming fast. I don't know. I just wanted to say that. <laughs> so... Um, Also, coming up later on uh, on the broadcast, actually, coming up after the first break, I'm going to play some music. Because why not? And, as a footnote to the Facebook and the YouTube censors, it's indie music. So we have full permission to run it. There's my disclaimer. Uh, But uh, I got some music from Dave Diamond coming up after the break. Uh, so you know now why it's being played. And it's a great little ditty called The End of the World. So, so doesn't it, does it feel like any, to anybody like it's the end of the world? Like when you come to the end of the year, you know, does it feel like the end of the world? I don't know. I think to some people it does. Because then you have this aspiration that you want the next year to be better. I see all these posts on social media saying, can't wait to start 2019. 2019 is going to be a better year. I think I hear that every year. I think every year we can say that we hear people saying, next year is going to be better. And if we hear that every single year, then it makes you wonder just how bad the previous year was. And so... When I look back a little bit, I thought to myself, you know, every year it's basically the same stuff. You have the same struggles year after year. So I think perpetually we want the next year to be better. We do. And somehow I don't think it's actually happening for us because next year we'll want 2020 to be a better year than 2019. And it not necessarily does it mean that you've had a terrible 2019 or that you've had a terrible 2018. Sometimes, or in many cases, I think this is in my opinion, that you've just had the same kind of year. Like, things didn't really improve. And I think it's the day-to-day struggles of life that just continue to bog us down. You know, expenses and, and uh, you know, increases in salary don't mean increases in living conditions. You know, uh, payments, new payments, debts on taxes, credit card debt from the previous holiday. You know, it's, I, I just, I feel like it's the same thing over and over again. So, in some cases, yes. Some, somebody, some people can say, I've had a really bad year. I'm looking forward to 2019 being better. And sometimes that means you had one or two really bad events. So obviously the following year should be better if you don't have those same types of events happening. But I think overall, we all continue to struggle year to year. And so when we say to one another, or we put out there on social media, hey, 2019, looking forward to a better year. You're just hoping for less struggles. I would say in my case, that's what it is. And I think I'm your average Joe American. So I would say in my case, I'm hoping that there are less struggles in 2019. Perhaps more opportunities present themselves in 2019. I'm hopeful for that. Obviously, I'm I'm in a happy place with everything that, you know, I have in front of me. The wonderful family. Wonderful job. You know, the fact that I have, you know, that I am working. I mean, there are some people that want to work that aren't, can't, can't find something. I mean, there's all these different scenarios. 
So be thankful for what you do have. And just recognize that, again, in my opinion, I think it's not that we're looking for like amazing things in the new year. I think we just want something to be a little bit better than the previous year or the previous years. We just want better because that's the pursuit of happiness, right? We just want something better to happen. But I just don't want you to lose sight of the fact that you should be happy with what you have. And I think that goes a long way because I've had a struggle with that. I used to be that person that would say, oh man, next year has got to be better than this year. God, how terrible this is. But you have to, you have to stop and focus and think to yourself, what do I not have? Sure, I'd like to hit the lottery, but I think I have to, you have to come to grips. I've had to come to grips that it's not very likely. So you have to come to grips with what you have. And I'm telling you, that was a long road for me. I'm telling you, personally, I've had to come to grips with that. I was one of those people that was looking for the greatest thing to come in the following year. And it wasn't coming. And I've had to, I've had to train myself and tell myself that what I have is perfect. So if something better than this happens, great, kudos. But you have to stop setting such high expectations. At least I've had to. And now I know I got this great, everything's great about my life. No matter the struggles. Sometimes it's not the struggle. Look at the people that are going through that struggle with you. And then we can we can come together and maybe be happier. You know? What do I wish for in 2019? I'll tell you what I wish for in 2019. I want people to love again. We need people to love again. We need people to to just be more appreciative of each other. We need society to come together and love. That's what we need. That's what we we're missing. We've been missing it for a long time. And we need to come back to that. That's what we really need to do. It's sad. But I think that that could solve a lot of problems. If we just love again. And that's what I wish for in 2019. That's what I wish for. I'm not looking for anything more. I mean, I would I, I whatever the universe gives me, I will take. But you know, if we can just fix this problem in society, or start to. And it starts with everyone. Everybody a little bit here, a little bit there. People look at me crazy when I go out and I be extra nice to people out in society. That's what we need. We need to inject it. And I'm just trying to inject it. Just trying to inject it. But right now I'm going to take a sip of my coffee while I inject a quick 90 second or less break. On the other side of the break, some Dave Diamond music to uh, for you to enjoy. And then we're going to talk about bad drivers again. Which is terrible that we have to keep talking about that. It's just, it becomes a constant topic. But this time it has a twist because I want to talk about a Facebook group who is taking aim at those bad drivers in their neck of the woods. So that's coming up next, right after this, on the Joel Mahalik Show. I'll be right back. So I use my computer every day. I'm not even sure how I get along without it. But I wasn't prepared for a virus. A Trojan, they called it. One night I'm cruising along, and the next night I can't do anything. I was afraid it was going to cost me a fortune. Boy, was I surprised. They had me back up and running the same day I called them. I really like PC Tech Rescue, and you know what? My wallet likes them too. Are you troubled by computer problems? PC Tech Rescue should be your very next call. Whether the problem is viruses, hardware, software, or any other issue, they can diagnose your problem and have you back up and running fast. With more than 25 years of industry experience, you can be sure you are getting dependable and affordable service. Call today. 484-429-6061 484-429-6061 or email us at pctechrescue 
at gmail.com. That was our good friend Dave Diamond, and you can find out more. If you like that, then you can find out more at DaveDiamondMusic.com and hear more of his music and find out where he is playing on the upcoming shows list. And he's playing a lot and everywhere, especially in the New York area. So, uh, welcome back to the Joel Mahalik Show. I'm Joel Mahalik. JoelMahalik.com is the home base 
You can also find us at Facebook at JM Talk or at Twitter at WQYB Radio. So various places to check us out. Like us, follow us, uh, message us, have a blast. That's how you do it. And so uh, anyway, uh, moving on, uh, just a quick note. I was really happy when I found out this morning that uh, there was an arrest made. And if you, if you haven't seen this national news, you know, uh, of what I call war on police. Uh, but on uh, the early hours of the 26th, the day after Christmas, um, uh, a law enforcement officer was uh, shot and killed, um, a corporal with the Newman Police Department in California, uh, Corporal Ronald Singh, 33 years old, uh, made a traffic stop on somebody who seemed to be driving while intoxicated, and that person uh, shot the corporal. And he died uh, at the hospital. A manhunt immediately ensued. And they did make an arrest on a two-time convicted drunk driver. Illegal alien. uh, uh, Not legally here in the U.S. And this is just another sad story. Uh, When you talk about the what what I call, and what the media has called, uh, the war on police. And here's here's an officer of the law. Pulling someone over for being intoxicated and driving, which is illegal. And regardless of the fact that he's in the country illegally, this man's performing his duty. And for that, his life was taken. Just like that. And I find that to be so upsetting anymore. You know, think about that. Think about this person just doing his job. You know, this guy could have gone on without being stopped and maybe killed somebody because he's drunk driving, you know, with the vehicle. And so for Corporal Singh to do his duty, he lost his life for that. And these are the terrible stories that I can't even stand anymore. I can't even stand anymore. But I'm happy that very quickly, we're talking in less than 48 hours, an arrest was made. And uh, uh, the man was arrested with Singh's handcuffs, which is um, somewhat of a... An unspoken code policy that police departments do. And uh, just, oh, I mean, I, I get so infuriated talking about it and trying to remain calm. But I was very happy to see that they made an arrest. And I hope, I hope and hope and hope that the full extent of every piece of law is wrapped around this guy and he's strangled with it. So, and then you can add to that if you want to get into that debate that he's here illegally. Again. But anyway, I digress and we move on. Uh, But our thoughts and prayers are out and about to the Singh family, uh, and I, I hope that somehow they they find peace. And it's not it's not it's never easy. Let alone then it happens this way. And that's a terrible, terrible loss to the police department, to the community, and above all, to the family. So. Uh, moving on to, uh, I, as I promised, <laughs> as I promised you, we're going to talk about crappy drivers. Uh, but this time, you know, it's no secret that I'm always complaining and talking about horrible drivers. If you listen to the podcast, you know that. And um, right 
somewhat up the road from us in an area called MOT, Middletown, Odessa, and Townsend. Three little towns that come together. They are getting really uh, ticked off about it. Now, over the last 20 or so years, that area has really been built up. And it continues to build and it continues to get bigger. And right now, uh, there's a project going on where they are uh, extending a somewhat uh, a minor highway and bringing it through town so it will get some of the traffic to be able to divert from going through the town of Middletown. It's called a 301 bypass, I think. But when you have that kind of expansion, you know, inevitably you'll have bad drivers. Well, a resident named Glenn Feinsilver got fed up with the drivers in the Middletown, Odessa, Townsend area who constantly cut them off tailgate or are just generally unpleasant when they're on the roads. So he launched a Facebook page for others like him to vent their frustrations. And uh, so far, in I think about a week or less, already over 100 members. So, uh, interesting. Interesting. Uh, he says, going into Middletown almost every single time somebody does something stupid. And he sees people doing ridiculous things. I can relate to that. We see it all the time. We see it all the time. I tell, In fact, I tell you, we have this relationship, you and I, and I tell you about these horrible drivers all the times. The ones that cut me off. The ones that don't use turn signals. The one a couple weeks ago who was driving in my lane right now. Towards me. I tell you about these people. So, Glenn's frustration got him thinking about a week or so ago about ways that he could start a community conversation about the aggressive driving. And then that's what gave birth to the Bad Drivers of Middletown, Delaware Facebook group, which was launched on the 16th of December, to be exact. So, the thing is, is he may have opened up a Pandora's box. Because the group keeps growing, and he's hearing people complain not only from that area, but they're complaining from everywhere. So it worked. What he wanted, he accomplished. He has a conversation going. So that's great. What's the next step, though? I've always uh, claim I, I've always said that what what you need is somehow you need more police presence on the on the roads looking for this. I, I mean, look, I know the police are overwhelmed, and they do a great job. But, I'm sorry, there is a but. However, a but however, a however but. If I am driving, let's say to work, which is a measly five, six miles from where I live, and I can see 99% of the people on their phones, which is against the law, stupid drivers, people doing bad things on the road. If I see all this in six miles, imagine... The imagine what the police could do. I'm talking about a ten minute six mile drive. All these things happen. So I know the police have a lot to do, and I know this is probably it's probably impossible. How do you do that? That's really the next step. That's what I'm saying. The next part of this conversation, Glenn and everyone else who's uh, venting on his page or venting on other pages. The next step is somehow how do we police it? How do we how do we uh, 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 get drivers to understand what they're doing is wrong? How are they disciplined for their actions? You know, it's the old saying: "Where's a cop when you need one?" You know, like you go through a yellow light that happens to turn red. At the last second, but it's enough for an officer who's nearby to want to pull you over and give you a ticket. And you think to yourself, what about the 30 other people I just saw doing stupid things on the road? What about the people that don't stop at stop signs, just keep going? Where are the police when you need them? Isn't that the old saying? So, so that's the question. That's the question that we really can't answer. That's the question we really can't wrap our arms around. 
because that's the next obvious step. Unless there's something that I'm not creatively thinking about, what is the next logical step in solving that problem? You can have all the conversation you want, but the thing is, is someone who's perusing social media and runs into that conversation, even if they run into a conversation and they're reading it, you go, oh, that was me. I did that. They're not going to then say, I'm an idiot. I need to straighten up. They're not going to do that. These people don't do that. So you have to find a way to make them understand that they're wrong. Because ultimately they find out when they cause an accident. And that's what we're trying to avoid. We don't want accidents. We don't want people getting hurt. I mean, I don't know who's teaching these people how to drive. Who's teaching these people to drive anymore? Because they drive like they've had no lessons at all. And I also blame technology. I think I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again. We've allowed technology to interfere with everything, including driving. Think about the technology that's out there. People who are driving like idiots are sometimes driving like idiots because they're paying attention to the damn cell phones. We allowed that to happen. And now we're saying, or at least I'm saying, I've been saying, and I have to find a way to really mount a campaign on this, is we need the phone companies to recognize that and mandate some way of shutting down cell service when you're inside of a car. So nothing about it works. We have to. Because otherwise, there's no other way to stop it. I mean, if the if the police can't be out there and stopping people for this new law they set up, then we have to find other ways to do it. That's where it comes in for the cell phone companies to do something. They can really step up and help. You know, you don't make a law against cell phone use in a vehicle, and then it's just going to make everything right. That's ridiculous. If you're not going to enforce it, you might as well not bother making that law. Laws are intended to be enforced to correct wrong behavior. So just writing a law down in the books and saying, well, now it's against the law, is not going to make people shudder and go, huh! Ah! I better not go on a cell phone. It's against the law. They're not going to do that. So I applaud Glenn Feinsilver for that. I'm pro- and I, I haven't yet because I've been, you know, a lot of family stuff going on. I plan on joining the page because I'm right down the street from Middletown. And I go to Middletown all the time and I have problems with drivers up there too. So I'm going to join the page. I'm also going to reach out to him and tell him that I talked about him on the podcast and showed him some love. For his project. And I think there should be more groups out there. You know? A grassroots movement. If we have more groups of of Facebook and social media groups being set up against bad drivers. Then I think that might help enhance the, the conversation on a larger level. So, all right. Well, listen. We got a new Wombat of the Week. We have a new hero this week. I have them both for you. And they're coming up after the break. So, joelmaholic.com. This is the Joel Mahalik Show. And I'm Joel Mahalik. Coming back after this. This message is for all of you sitting in the passenger seat. And apologies if it gets a little uncomfortable. But how does it feel to be at the mercy of someone who thinks a random text is more important than your life? Someone who takes their eyes off the road while speeding along in a three-ton hunk of steel. Freaky, right? Well, why not just ask them to stop? Or better yet, volunteer to text for them. It might be a little awkward, but believe me, you'll live. Learn more at StopTextStopRex.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Broadcasting from a crummy little studio in Baltimore, Maryland. This is Reality One Radio. You see why we need your donations?
Welcome back to the Joel Mahalik Show, everyone. And if you like old-time radio like I do, then listen up. Because uh, on our new affiliate, broadcast affiliate, that we will be joining on January 6th, 920 WON The Apple, they will be doing a Jack Benny Marathon starting on Sunday night, the 30th, at 11 p.m. So it is, uh, if you like old time radio, then you probably like Jack Benny. I love Jack Benny. So anyway, stop on over there. The link will be on the website. You can go to joelmahalik.com to get the link to listen to the 365 stream of 920 WON and check them out and do check them out because guess what? We'll be there starting next week. Uh, so great stuff over there. Uh, welcome back to the program. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is our final broadcast of 2018. So big things for us in 2019 is joining the 920 family and uh, hopefully other big things in store uh, for the show. And uh, when they happen, we will let you know. But uh, so as promised also, every week we promise you a new wombat. And... Um, it's about that time for the Wombat. But listen, here's the thing. You can get involved. You can get involved with the Wombat of the Week. All you got to do is submit your Wombat of the Week story to the show. Simply email the link to a news story of stupid people doing stupid things to wombat at joelmaholic.com or email to joelmaholicradio at gmail.com. You can also submit your stories in a message or not or. That's a message on our Facebook page at JM Talk. So get those stories in. By the way, you can also follow me at WQYB Radio on Twitter. So there you have it. So we do this every week, and it's, uh, you know, the, the, the world, uh, uh, the news world, and social media and the internet are ablaze every week with wombats for the taken. So, I bring to you another Wombat of the Week. So, here it is. Uh, this story is about two women who were charged in a uh, very ill-timed theft at a Target store, which was filled with cops. So, so this happened in Detroit, and... Uh, Here's what happened. Two women were caught allegedly stealing $1,900 worth of electronics from a Target in Michigan. Uh, this happened on the same day the store was packed with police for their annual shop with a cop event. Bloomfield Township Police Sergeant Dan Brown said, I couldn't believe it. So about 15 police officers were at the Target on Wednesday night. And they were helping 22 disadvantaged children pick out Christmas presents for their families. Uh, Kiana Wilson, age 40, of Burton, and Dana Johnson, aged 18, of Flint, were both also there. Brown said that the store security officers watched on cameras as the women loaded a cart with two Apple Watches, two iPads, and a Nintendo gaming system. At about 7.30 p.m., they walked past the registers without paying, but they never made it to the parking lot. The loss prevention officers actually apprehended them, then asked for police assistance. This, according to Sylvan Lake Police Sergeant Michael Mondo, who organized the Shop with a Cop event. He says the police officers were only about 20 feet away when they tried to walk out of the store. The women knew the store was filled with police. Brown said Johnson even approached an officer earlier in the night, complimenting him about how generous the cops were with their time. It wasn't 10 minutes later that the same officer gets called into the loss prevention office where the women were take, taken after being caught. Brown went on to say she was trying to distract him. And yes, that, that's, that's what she was doing. She was trying to throw them off. Wilson and Johnson were arraigned in court on retail fraud charges. Brown said bond was set at $250,000 for Johnson, who had a past criminal history. Wilson's bond was set at $20,000. Mondo said the children who participated in Shop with a Cop were able to spend a total of about $5,000 on their gifts thanks to donations from local businesses and community members. Uh, 
The Kigo Harbor Police Department posted a picture of the police officers and their family members who participated on Facebook. The caption included words of thanks for the people involved and the story. It also said, quote, On a side note, there must have been a special episode of Dumb Criminal Minds being filmed live as a person tried to shoplift a bunch of electronics right in front of about 10 cops. They didn't get far. Don't take what is not yours. It's a simple rule that everyone should abide by and the world would be a better place. And that's true. So, uh, to recap, when there is a shop with a cop event going on, you typically don't want to shoplift. I mean, that is the that is the uh, the classic example of stupid criminals, stupid people doing stupid things. Uh, it, it, you know, and again, here we go again I'm, with another life lesson, because really, and it, the world would be a better place if people didn't steal. Then it wouldn't cost retailers more money in loss prevention, which in turn would keep prices from having to be raised to cover costs of stolen goods and to cover costs of more loss prevention. You know? And who wins? No one. There's only losers. So look at all the effects, the cause and effects of a simple shoplifting event. It's silly. And so if people didn't do these stupid things, it does, little by little, make the world a better place. Going back to what I said earlier, we need to love again. We need to come together. This is part of that. What do you, what do you win for shoplifting? Okay, so let's say they succeeded. So you got some electronics. Who cares? You know? What did that do for you? Do you feel any better about yourself? Do you feel more loved? Do you feel more successful because you ripped off a retail outlet? And now you've uh, you've the cause and effect is that you've made it worse for everyone else because they will pay the price. There will be increases in prices to cover costs that you incurred by being an ass. So it it doesn't pay. It doesn't do anything for anybody. And this is just one thing. Shoplifting. Look at the other hundreds and hundreds of crimes, misdemeanors, and and just plain bad things that you can do in your life. That if you didn't do, would be a small effort into making the world a better place. That's all I'm saying. So... Moral of the story is, if you're going to be a dumbass and shoplift, you might want to consider making sure you're not shoplifting during a shop with a cop or any other kind of shopping with cops event. But I'd rather you take this this a step further and just not do it. So these two women, for their efforts, their failed efforts, I might add, and many thanks to all the police officers and loss prevention involved that caught them, stopped them, and saved anguish on everyone else. Thank you. And for these two women, you're the Wombats of the Week. Right here on the Joel Mahalik Show. You won that accolade. I hope you're proud of yourself. I bet your families are proud. I'll bet. Anyway. So get your stories in for Wombat of the Week. Joel Mahalik, radio, the, at gmail. Dot com. So we put that story to bed. That story actually goes into the fireplace as fire starter once it's all done. So, uh, as we do also every week on the show, is we honor a hero. Okay. Now, most times it's usually police officers we're honoring, but that's because we see more of that, although we've had other first responders. So it's not that I am uh, favoring. Uh, police and law enforcement it's that uh, I, I need other stories and you can contribute you can send those stories to me as well and I would be glad to feature them unfortunately it's tough to find a lot of that in the news 
because of the, as I said before, the war on cops, the war on police. But, and I also want to say that I'm a little late. Uh, we, we, last week's Wild by the Week has not appeared yet on social media. And I'm just a little behind on that because of the holidays. So they'll both wind up getting on there over the next day or two. Last week's and this week. We will get them featured on social media. Uh, which is, uh, it's actually a very popular post on uh, Twitter. Uh, so people look forward to that. And I apologize. I apologize. The, the, I allowed the holidays to get in, in, in uh, too much into everything. And, and I'll, I'll, get, I'll, I'll get back on the course. I will steer the course, make a course correction, and I'll get this all straightened out. So, <laughs> But anyway, staying in Michigan with tonight's uh, stories. Staying in Michigan, a Michigan officer uh, is being praised, Officer Tony Jacob, for using his patrol car to stop a sleepy driver who was going the wrong way on a highway in western Michigan. Uh, the police department in Wyoming, Michigan says that Officer Attorney Jacob was driving on US-131 early Thursday morning when he saw headlights coming at him. I know that feeling, officer. I just had it last week. Uh, the wrong way vehicle th- uh, then went past him. Uh, Jacob quickly turned around. And the dash cam video shows him catching up to the vehicle, which police say was going roughly 50 to 60 miles per hour. Jacob determined the driver appeared to be sleeping, so he nudged the other vehicle until it spun and stopped. The driver reportedly said that he hadn't slept for 40 hours. Lieutenant Eric Weiler says without Jacob's quick actions, the wrong way vehicle most certainly would have hit another vehicle head on. So these these are the types of things, right? We these are the things we need to hear more of. These police officers that take these actions to save lives, one way or the other. So, and here's a perfect example. And so, Officer Officer Attorney Jacob joins the ranks, if you will, joins the club joins the portfolio of Honor Thy Heroes for doing that. These are the things that we need more of. I feel like there's this common theme in tonight's show about more, more love. See, I'm, see, I'm doing it. I'm laying it in there. I'm, I'm fitting it in. Doesn't it feel good to hear this kind of story? Nobody was hurt. Somebody could have been hurt. Somebody could have been very seriously hurt by that driver. But Officer Jacob's quick actions on what to do, and I think I said this before, I don't know if we would all react the same way as some of these officers do. These officers that jump into freezing waters, uh, this man puts his, his car and his life at slight risk. Anything could have gone wrong when you... I mean, we've all seen it on police shows, how they do that bump to try to stop cars. We see what happens sometimes. Cars can flip, you know. But this officer took an educated guess on what he was going to do, and he got it to just spin to a stop, thereby not harming the driver or harming himself or other people. So... These are the types of things that I'd love to hear. You know, all these different stories about police officers and first responders and EMTs and dispatchers doing these great and wonderful things. And it injects some of that feel good that we need throughout society. So that is your Honor Thy Heroes for this week, which will be prominently on display here, like I said. Uh, in the next day or two as I get myself back on track. I have to bring myself out of the holidays and back into my regular scheme. I've also been off from all my jobs for right now about nine days. Yeah, with a couple more to go. So I have to start focusing on getting back into that mode. Otherwise, I'm going to be dragging into work on Wednesday. And I don't want to do that. They were dragging into work, and people would be like, wow, you must have really celebrated. No, I did nothing. I did nothing. I didn't catch up on sleep. I didn't do anything. You know? (laughs) 
I, to me, it, have you ever done that? Have you ever just did nothing? Like, I'm trying to figure out, what did I get accomplished on this long break from works? And then I look back and I'm thinking, I really didn't get anything done. Jesus, I'm lazy. Is, is that what it boils down to? Am I lazy? Maybe that's it. I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, um, so anyway, uh, just some uh, quick reminders for you. Don't forget, next week we are going to premiere on 920 WON, the Apple, in Brooklyn. Uh, please visit joelmahalik.com for more information about that, including the link on where you need to go to listen to it, not only on your computer, but your mobile devices. Like everything else in this world, you can listen on your mobile devices. And uh, so we'll be premiering there. And um, what are you doing on New Year's Eve? I think there's a song to that effect. I will be doing nothing, just so everybody's clear. If you're wondering what Joel Mahalik is doing on New Year's Eve, nothing. I'm doing nothing. I'll probably make some kibasi and sauerkraut. Mmm. I can taste it already. And then other than that, nothing. Watching TV. There'll be nothing different tomorrow night until 11.45. And if I'm still awake, that's when I'll turn on to watch the ball drop. And then after that, watch some fireworks. And then go to bed. That's it. So, yeah. I don't go out. And it's as I said. I don't want to deal with those kinds of people out there on the roads. Yeah, that's we, and we've toyed with that. You know, Sharon and I have toyed with that for a long time. Why don't we go do something on New Year's Eve? Why don't we go to one of these parties? You know, a lot of the community centers and fire departments and hotels and stuff will throw these big extravagant events. But, you know... I. It's not that I wouldn't go. I'd love to go do something like that. But I absolutely fear the end result of having to come out of there. At the end of it all. And work our way home. I'm not worried about me. I wouldn't even drink at one of those events. I'm never worried about me. I have to worry about everybody else. You have to worry about everybody else. So, as we close out this podcast and this year, 2018... I want to wish everybody a happy new year. I want you to be safe for New Year's. No matter what you're doing, I want you to be extra cautious. I want you to have a happy and safe and healthy and prosperous new year. And I hope that all of our dreams, whatever they are, whatever they may be for 2019, come true for all of us. No matter the dream. No matter your wish. I hope that we all have the proverbial better new year in 2019. And I hope that you tell all your friends about me and I get even more listeners in 2019. That's my show's wish. Go tell everybody. So happy new year, everybody. I wish you all well. And I hope to see you again as we embark on 2019. Goodbye, everybody. We'll see you next week.